Good morning, Scott Davis from TechWise Group here. Today is April 21st, 2020, and it is Big Word Day. So after you watch my video, scroll over to dictionary.com, learn a couple new big words, and then challenge your family to Scrabble later today. Um, on a bright side, New York State has legalized through executive order video conferencing for marriages. So this is after already allowing people to get marriage certificates remotely. Now you can complete it and get married over video conferencing. Being married, getting married last year, it would have been quite interesting to see how our wedding would have went over video conferencing. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you were planning a spring wedding in the state of New York, you got the marriage certificate, you're ready to go. You can complete that, you know, your vows, you know, virtually now using Zoom, Microsoft Teams, uh, FaceTime, you know, etc. So definitely kudos and congratulations to everyone that is getting married uh, during the COVID-19 coronavirus uh, epidemic, pandemic. Um, on a side note, on another note similar to that, industry groups such as the Cyber Threat Alliance, Cybersecurity Coalition, the Global Cyber Alliance are combining their forces and they're, they're trying to push Congress to place funds for cybersecurity funding as part of the next COVID-19 coronavirus stimulus package. So through this process of lobbying to kind of get these funds in, I I agree. Uh, if you pay attention to any of my videos, you absolutely understand that there just isn't enough money for small businesses and businesses to adopt the right security in their businesses. But then you have the flip side of it of well, what is the right technology? What is the right steps? And there's so much with technology and so many different answers depending who you talk to that it can become that it's just money that's being thrown to a problem that's not really fixing the problem. And my personal feeling, my gut, uh, my opinion is it shouldn't be combined with the COVID-19 coronavirus stimulus package. Um, I think it's something that the federal government can work on. I think it should be outside of the stimulus package. Uh, I'm all for the industry groups groups lobbying for funds to you know go to cybersecurity because the money is needed in cybersecurity. But businesses have to take the approach that's right for them. And I think it's critical for NIST, the National Institute of Standards for Technology, to really outline what those base practices are um, so that any funds that you do have, you know, there's an agreement upon the industry worldwide, uh, at least through the NIST standard, of where the right money should be and what tools and services should be in place. So... I think it's good, but I also don't think it's in the right place bundling in or trying to get it put into the cybersecurity funding as part of the COVID-19. On the side, you know, even continuing into that, uh, Tempered, uh, it's a cybersecurity firm, just released a study that showed 24% of those that responded had experienced the data breach over the last two years. So again, I agree, money is needed. Businesses have to allocate the right amount of funds for cybersecurity. And for each business, it's different what that number is for funds. If you're storing you know, social security numbers, your funds should be higher. If you're storing HIPAA, your funds should be higher. If you're storing PII, your funds, you know, it's really you know, understanding your business and how you operate to determine how much money should be going to cybersecurity. The bigger issue I think in their study is 22% of those that responded believe a firewall is enough to protect their organization. So this goes back to the same thing that I just mentioned that just because one person says it's enough doesn't mean it actually is. Um, a firewall is just one piece of your security structure and it's hardly enough to fully protect your organization, especially, you know, your firewalls at your business. And in today's modern workforce that was pretty much forced, you know, upon a lot of businesses through COVID-19 coronavirus, the firewall doesn't protect your employees if they're at home. So it's, I think, critical to take that into consideration as well. The Android App Store, Apatode, uh, announced uh, a breach of about 49 million accounts. Now, 49 million is a huge number. It's important to take into consideration that 32 million of those were using OAuth through either, go through either Google or Facebook. So 
of the 49, you know, take 32 million out of those uh, as passwords weren't breached because the passwords are stored through Google or Facebook. But it is one of the main uh, app stores for the Android operating system. So if you are using Apatode, then it is time to change your password and change your password for any account that's using the same username and password that you use for Aptoad. <coughs> Cybersecurity firm Cybill discovered 267 million Facebook user records are being sold for about 500 euros on the dark web. So this includes full name, your email address, your phone, your Facebook ID, the last time you connected, status age. Uh, so uh, last week I went through and I showed a screenshot of, you know, one of those Facebook surveys. Um, you know, what is your age? What was your first school? What's your maiden name? You know, going through those security questions. And that's just one piece of it. The other thing with Facebook, et cetera, is every app, every website that you connect to Facebook, um, you're giving access to that third party to your information. And a lot of times that's giving your full name, your email, your phone, your Facebook ID, you know, when you last connected status date, it's giving a lot of that information to these third parties and you're doing it willingly. Uh, my recommendation right here is take a couple minutes Go to Facebook, go to your settings, uh, and then you see apps and websites. And you can actually go through your apps and websites and say, I don't use this anymore. I still use this. I know what this is. Oh my God, what is this? But you can use that and actually remove those connections to the third parties so that ultimately they are no longer able to connect. So the last thing that I want to cover today is proactive today, but it's really for the future planning. Um, documentation is a crucial part of your business. Um, if you go um, and think about it, you know, you should have an acceptable use policy. You should have, you know, data management plans. You know, documentation should be a part of every technology, you know, department out there. And the one thing, you know, through all of this is planning for the next time something like this happens. So a pandemic, a pandemic response uh, almost for your business. And one of the things that I'm seeing in a lot of my network assessments that are going on right now is a lot of Wi-Fi networks are still enabled for businesses that aren't in their physical locations. So Wi-Fi travels through walls. Wi-Fi can hit your parking lot. Wi-Fi travels. It is wireless. So a lot of the companies that I'm advising right now, I'm making the recommendation of actually logging in and disabling their Wi-Fi, their SSIDs. If you're not in the building, it really doesn't need to be on. Uh, but a lot of the organizations that I'm assessing right now, a lot of the organizations that I'm talking to that are closed, that don't have anyone going to their offices, still have their wireless on. Uh, now I know yesterday in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, Governor Wolf extended the stay-at-home order until May 8th. Uh, some states have already extended it into June. So chances are, if you're in one of these states, I'd make the recommendation, you know, log in remotely as your IT, log in remotely and disable that office Wi-Fi if you have it enabled. Uh, it's easy to do depending on the tool that you're using. Um, some Wi-Fi you'll be able to do it remotely, some you won't. Um, but it's just, I think it's an added protection. Just because you're not driving to the office doesn't mean someone's not sitting in the parking lot and trying to connect to your Wi-Fi. So a great security tip, um, just moving forward, kind of, you know, as your future planning, you know, the check boxes of what to do when the next pandemic arrives, uh, add disable office Wi-Fi as part of that checklist. And I think you're going to be safer for it. So if you have any other questions on documentation, uh, security threats, you know, how to allocate the right funds for your security needs, uh, reach out to me, scott at techwisegroup.com. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to talk about security and I'd love to see what you have today. So if you need anything, you know, comment on one of these posts or shoot me an email, scott at techwisegroup.com. Otherwise, have yourself a great Tuesday and I'll see everybody tomorrow.